wow, it's a two minute practice. And we did a, one of those things where for Jersey night, we pick a thing to practice and it was about drawing characters in action, just the silhouette. And we're going to talk about how it went and pick another practice to explore next on practice. Welcome to the Two Minute Practice Podcast. Here, the hosts of the Lena Tart Podcast explore and encourage you to join us in trying all kinds of different creative activities to help us practice things related to making our art, exploring, growing in our business practice, and even trying things for a healthy lifestyle. We'll talk about what we practiced recently, things we saw in the community, and then we will highlight new ideas for all, all its next. Two minutes is a findable amount of time to try things. I'm Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist. And I'm Rob Spensinger, UX designer, interactive maker, and teaching artist. Hey, good to see you, Rob. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Jersey. So, yeah, let's take a look at what we did for our two-minute practice this last two weeks. What did we do? Well, uh, it was this, uh, like, like we do, sometimes there are, our prompts because are like evolve. We'll have, have an idea and then, and uh, like one of us will add and steer and stuff. And where, what became, uh, our prompt was something that you thought of, which was silhouettes, but characters in action. Right. Mm. So, um, somehow pick a way to just do the essential, the, the block of a character, the, the positive space. Um, I suppose you could do negative space. Be yeah. harder. Yeah, you could. I didn't think about doing it like that. And uh, yeah, I, I seem to remember saying something along the lines of like, I'm looking forward to discovering maybe a new way of thinking about how I construct figures when I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know if I really learned all that much. I only did, I only did a few check-ins on it. Um, mm -hmm. But it did give me some other insights and approaches for some upcoming projects, but I, I'd rather start with you and see how you met this one. How did this one come uh, happen for you? I, I think it was, I enjoyed it. And that's always a signal, which is if I, if I actually feel like the, the, the practice is holding something, um, something to discover and explore. And even if it's like, um, you know, it's like a workout kind of thing that, you know, it's, it's not necessarily going to make a product, but, um, this one had that kind of promise. So I did actually, um, I think I did the practice four times and I thought I was going to do more though, because silhouettes are uh, something I play with a lot, but I tend to be playing with silhouettes to like block in overall composition and landscapes. And it was the action characters thing mixed with and I hate to say this, it's, I don't have a project that features like humanoid specific action characters right now. And, um, so, um, I can, let me show you what I was doing is I ended up, uh, picking characters, um, like, uh, pizzas, right. From, from the two pizza team project ah. that I did a, I did a <laughs> test, um, comic of, right. And, yeah. um, yeah, so I do two minutes of these, you know, essentially uh, circles that discs, right? Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, doing some action things. But I, but it was the, um, and, you know, like a lot of times we say the two minute practice isn't about doing a, um, you know, a, a, an output for a particular thing, but... Uh, but gosh, having some little extra seed for this one, a catalyst to be a need to explore, mm -hmm. um, it helped. So I just, oh, yeah. I ended yeah. the pizzas, you know? And, uh, so there we go. I, I did three, but then I did a separate drawing where actually I, I did, I did rabbits for my first drawing. I'm like, why am I even doing rabbits? But it was really similar where they were doing these action poses. Um, but then I had a theme this, uh, for the, my last three that was, uh, yeah. Two pizza team pizzas. And I, I don't know if I learned a lot from it, really. <laughs> it just, it didn't quite have that giant pull spark that was like silhouettes. Wow. I'm going to be, there's going to be like 20 of these things. I'm going to be doing these every day, maybe a couple times. It's going to be great, but no. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's, I feel like I got the same takeaway where it's like, I didn't mind doing it. 
it was pl- it was pleasant to do a low risk drawing activity, um, low <laughs> low cost I should say a low cost drawing activity. Um, the this practice is also meeting me in the midst of a fairly intense l- couple weeks, as I know it has been for you too, and mm-hmm. sort of like finding the space emotionally to put it where I wasn't like attending it with a sense of like tiredness or exhaustion. Um, although I wonder, see, now I'm questioning myself. I wonder if that would have, what the practice would have been like if I, if I did it really tired, right? Cause I think about like this idea of practice. Wh- one of the things I hope to get out of practice is coming in contact with this idea of discipline, discipline mm-hmm. being the sense of like, I, sh- I show up and do it no matter how I feel about doing it. Right. I'm, I'm going to go jogging this morning, even though I'm really tired, but like, but it, then th- like this other voice in my committee shows up to say like, yeah, well, but don't injure yourself because you're not a young man anymore. <laughs> and I know that that voice isn't just trying to talk me out of doing it, like sleeping in, you know, I know that that's a legitimate voice in my head right now. So, uh, but so I, I don't know, but anyway, I, I was trying to find time to show up for it where I felt like, okay, I can attend to this with my full, full thought. And I, I'm not just dashing it off. Uh, and I think that's what made me limit my amount of practices. That I don't, I can't off the top of wow. my head recall if that's how I've always done it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I was beat every time. I, I was like, oh, yeah, I committed to do the two-minute practice. Oh, all right, let's do this. <laughs> so... <laughs> with a crusty, I, um, the cr- crusty the clown groan uh, I had this <laughs> thing again <laughs> it was well except it was um like dis- discipline crusty right so yeah, you know yeah. it was um it wasn't uh you know giving up on the world crusty but like yeah. um it's like you know what uh i'm gonna do this thing and i guess i'm gonna do it now <laughs> Okay. Okay. And, let's 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 yeah. use the let's use the model, the framework of how we think about two minute practice to engage with that thought. So, how did it feel at the start? Like, what what did it feel like? I mean, you you said like I'm feeling like oh, I guess I got to do this practice. So you said you started with bunnies. Mm-hmm. So was it just like um, for, it's it's for some reason if I'm going to cartoon something, um, uh, bunnies. It just just naturally um, they're they're a cute c- character that. Um, I can easily quickly draw in a bajillion different ways. And then, uh, I guess I associate, uh, bunnies with fun and you know, that's, that was a, f- it, so it was like literally if I have no other option and I'm going to sit down and draw, there's a decent chance I'm going to draw, um, a guitar, a bunny, a skull or my hand. <laughs> okay. So, the- so you have some you have some preferred go to tools for doing these kinds of uh, drawing warm up exercises or practices. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you face a blank canvas and be and then that ambiguity can can be a roadblock, but I but I sort of have those built in things that it's it's okay. I'll I'll put one of these here and see what happens. So why did you switch to pizzas? The pizza characters were two pizza team. I didn't because I didn't have a why for the bunnies. Where I was like, well. Wh- with like you said, why bunnies? And I'm just, uh, they're reflexive, instinctual bunnies. Um, they don't have a job. They're, yeah. So I, I thought I want to have a reason to explore the poses, right? And I thought, oh, I can, I could always use more practice drawing, um, you know, biped, humanoid type stuff, right? Yeah. But then again, I only have two minutes. And then again, I have no project to like there's no planted flag to even sort of like so a lot of times practicing is a it can be a warm-up to be generally more prepared for a thing even though i don't have the specific answer right so i wouldn't expect like oh i have you know um you know teenagers and and um you know um elderly folks uh, enjoying uh tai chi right mm-hmm I don't have that specificity where I don't have that project to wander toward. And, uh, so yeah, right. So then I just went with a different reflex. It was an old project. Uh, this yeah. is so revealing our biases. Uh, cause I, I feel like I went down a very similar path to you. Oh, really? 
Yeah. And, and it's interesting because like, as I listen to you, oh, I'm so grateful for this because like, I know what I experienced and now I get to stand outside of that through listening to your experience and I get to like, sort of like reflect on, um, what would teacher Jersey say to Rob hearing that? Because like <laughs> right now I'm going through a series of classes with young people and I'm really trying to encourage them to write an idea down and respond to it. Don't ask yourself too many questions about what function is going to serve in the story later on. Just put the idea down and start to arrange elements around it and react to that initial thought. Mm -hmm. And the why of that thought will reveal itself over time. Right. Which is a very different way than I used to teach in terms of like, oh, you got to like work out like a scaffolding and an architecture, come up with your big why, and then have all ideas point at the big why. It's more of a, another way of approaching it where it's like you're discovering the big why based on an intuitive initial blotch on the page. Right. This, this very Natalie Goldberg way of just like keep the hand moving. Right. Mm -hmm. And so part of me wants to say to you is like, well, maybe I wonder what would have happened if you had stuck with bunnies and discovered the why later. But. I say that as shouldn't <laughs> because here's my practice, Rob, up on the screen. And actually, these are out of order. So this is the order that I did them in. I started with, oh, goodness gracious, golly gee, I had it all set up all perfectly, and now I messed it all up. Uh, of course, I worked on sticky notes because that is my preferred medium for doing two-minute practice drawing uh, exercises at any rate. And this is where I began with running poses, right? And I know that I have a very specific type of way I arch the back when I draw characters running. It's very kind of exaggerated and kind of comical. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, this, this comes from my like youth when I was trying to ape monkey punch. Like I really wanted to be monkey punch when I was first starting out. Um, so, mm -hmm. and, and then I thought, okay, well the next one I was like, well, let's do something that's a little bit more static. So I, I do remember saying specifically last episode, like I'm going to draw somebody slouching. All right, draw somebody slouching saying, I don't know who ate all the cookies, not me. Um, <laughs> but I, what I did was I was starting with a blue line, actually like structural drawing, where I actually did like all the, the shapes and the stick figure and the bubble shapes over top. And then I just filled it in with a graphite pencil. And I realized I wasn't really, I was thinking about the form and using the silhouette to try to glean, like how am I constructing figures? And I don't, and this didn't really do anything for me. It was just like, I'm drawing people for a little while. Okay. I'm doing some poses that, mm. are, that come easy to me. Okay. But it didn't, say, it didn't, like I said, didn't have a job to do. And so I had lined up this week this painting that I did on my live stream uh, wow. very recently. Oh, thanks. Um, and yeah, it's, the barbarian horse. It's, yeah. uh, it's amazing. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So it's this barbarian horse character that I've been working on. And I realized that while I know I can draw horses, it's not something that I think about a lot. I don't have a bank of ready-to-go poses of horses in my head, right? So that, aha, mm -hmm. my last practice, I opened up Pinterest and just looked up horses, right? And I looked at a bunch of different horse poses. And then I thought, well, let's not do the construction this time. Let's start with the contour and fill it in. See if you can like just, just draw the contour of the thing, sort of like a, a gesture drawing, but really tiny, <laughs> right? And with, it, with an ink pen, because I was also trying not to like... I was trying to talk myself out of trying to get it right on the uh, through multiple tries. Try to get it as close as you can on the first try and see if like you can start to like warm up to how the anatomy uh. of horses works and like what shapes they kind of take um, when they're standing or walking away or up on their hind legs. And this was all I was able to pull off in two minutes because part of the constraint there was looking up the images. Oh, that's, you know, scroll, scroll, scroll. That's a good one. I'm going to do that one real quick. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I was back. wondering if you were just going from memory or, no. or had reference for this because, yeah, these are, I mean, they're, they're quick gestural, um, you know, silhouettes of horses, but, uh, but they have a lot of, uh, they have a d dimension to them, right? It's all, it's, mm. it's, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, like distant symbols from, from memory, right? Right, right. No, I was actually looking at the picture when I drew these. Mm -hmm. so like this is when it started to feel like okay i'm doing something now and again i question that because we have always talked about the practice is not necessarily having a job to do but the moment i mm -hmm. found a job for it to do i was suddenly invested in doing it so well and so, so i guess a lot I, we're probably dealing with a bias for specific or implied jobs this is my hypothesis Mm -hmm. So like the implied job can, can be, um, it can be 
let's see, disguised as open experimentation and practice for practice sake. Right. But if it just, but if it hits your bias of like, well, I, I want the, this right. And fill in the blank of what's this. And, uh, then I'm, I'm guessing maybe some of our practices just happen to hit in that, that zone. Um, and we've got the meta of doing the two minute practice about practices. And, and there are some things about it that have, um, like a repeating ritual that is meant to, to be, uh, like generally, uh, emergently nourishing, not specifically. Right. And certainly, mm-hmm. Yeah. And not, not like have, uh, I, I don't know. There's, I, is everything wrapped in a job? I don't, I no, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm grateful that we're talking about this right now because I think that this is something to, to, to really be thoughtful about when we're engaging with our art in that our psyches are, we have, they have their biases and we have our predispositions. And when we encounter frictions, we often go to things that make us feel safer. Right. Um, Mm. that's a human way to approach it. Right. But on the other hand, I also really enjoy the thing I like about two minute practice is that it it is a biweekly excuse for me to engage with student mind, right? Getting, letting something happen where I don't know what the outcome is, but I'm trusting that the teachers set me on this path on purpose. Right. And like that sort of like um, re- relaxing and releasing oneself into the tide kind of feeling versus just like I, I feel like I see this happen with my students all the time where it's like they're trying to steer my lesson into something that they want to make as an outcome. And I'm like, yep, hack the challenge, but don't hack the challenge to the point where you're wrestling with it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying that that's what we did. Oh, wow. But... Yeah. I mean, my, my huge example of a project, like I did, I've done that with projects. The, yeah. It, it's, it's, um, it's my, my recent workshop that, that I, um, that I published, uh, listening like a coach, which I suppose this is an incidental mention <laughs> ad spot for it. If you go to uh, gum.co slash LLACWS, there you go. Check it out. But like producing that, I ha- always had a hunch where um, like I based that on a, on a talk I gave and I thought, um, well, I gave a talk at an event for people, you know, leaders and, and, um, and up and coming leaders in technology. And, you know, here you go listening like a coach is a way to level up as a leader. But I always saw how like, ah, this is so user experience related. I think I'm going to turn this into a module, into a lo- user experience thing. And gosh, did I wrestle with that? And it just didn't want to be that. And I had this other agenda for it that um, I had to let go of it. And, and it, it's a useful thing on itself. I, I, I evolved the talk into a full workshop and, and it's solid. But it, I couldn't get past and get it done when I was trying to turn it into something else. Yeah. And it's just trying to turn stuff into other stuff um, isn't always a, um, a, a fit. Um. I mean, on the positive side, it can help you want to show up because you're like, well, I've got this thing. It's not a great idea, but I want to do it. And I guess I got to find out that it's not a great idea by going through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, I don't think that's what we did with this practice. I just think it mm. points to how we can do that with projects, right? Like when we, mm. when we impose what job we want it to do, it can get us more excited about something or it can lead us down a non-productive path. And it just, I think it's just worth just saying it out loud just to put it like a pin in it and like sort of like remind ourselves that that's something that we're, we're prone to at least me and you. Uh, but I, like I said, I see students do this all the time where they get frustrated with an assignment because they aren't surrendering to not having an objective. Don't have an objective, just experience the, 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 the act of doing the thing. And then we'll talk about what possible objectives we can think about in the future, right? There's such a thing as doing something for the practice of it. It really is. And if you need to call, I mean, that in itself is a kind of um, uh, expectation to say that the that will be nourishing. And this reminds me of a uh, talk we had on a different show with Brandon Dayton um, a couple years back. Mm. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Just about how he approaches his practice and uh, the, the, the showing up has, it, it has an effect. Um, yeah. You're developing other skills and capacity, shifting attention. Um, the, you know, like the, 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 the mindset of openness and uh, being willing to be um, affected and learn and being a student. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it, that's interesting. I like, I, I want to carry that with when we, when we start to think about what, pra- what we want to practice next. Yeah. So let's take a break and then talk about what we're going to practice next. What do you say? Sounds excellent. Okay. Well, if you find this, this kind of talk useful, if this is helping you do your creative work, a great way to help the show is to, oh, let me hit the music. Support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. Or you can interact with the things that we make. And the thing that I make that I hope you'll check out is the 4 million years later podcast. What is it? Well, it's the answer to the question. Does creative does creativity thrive in freedom or in constraints? And it, it is a story analysis analysis podcast wherein the subject of study is the 1980s Transformers cartoon. We watch an episode a week and dig deep to explore the story's structure and meaning, infer the writer's intentions, and synthesize them with the context of conflicting needs of a daily television show explicitly designed to advertise toys. Rob? Well, I want to point you to a blog that I make, and I've been doing this every day in 2021, writing an article and posting it at interactive-storyteller.com. I think if you watch this show or the other shows that we do, um, I think you're going to like the kind of things I write about. I mean, of course, it's a combination of art and uh, with an emphasis on design, and creativity, collaboration. And uh, this is where the Polytechnic cast, another show I do lives, but then the, the everyday thing are my writing. So uh, writing posts. So anything like learn or look cool, starting UX with one reason, continuing for another, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So practical ideas, uh, stories, and learn from to, to grow it. Is at interactive-storyteller.com interactive-storyteller.com yeah, the, the Skype was clipping a little bit there so I want to make sure I said that URL one more time the... I appreciate that thank you <laughs> alright so let's do there we go <laughs> Okay, so we're now talking about what we're going to do next. Mm. What do we want to do for our next two minute practice? Well, what could be what could be a, 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 a I don't know, like the, the the showing up and practicing. That's interesting. So, but part of it could be, you know, we could try to practice like frequency of the practicing. We could try to, um, explore. I mean, we did, we did something visual. Mm -hmm. Um, there's things that, that, that go toward, um, like physical mechanical skills, uh, are, are, I think a really strong match for that. Um, so could be, we could go back to, uh, health and fitness stuff or switch up the kind of things we, we'd want to visit making. Mm. Um, it's been a while since noise as well. So That's what right. do you think? What are you, what, are, are there any sparks in there for, for, for what you're hearing? Mm. Mm. Yeah. The moment you said noise, I was like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, we haven't done that in a while. And because I, have very I would I would call my skill set in making noise very low. Um, I know how to manipulate the keys on a, on a keyboard enough to make a couple of you know sounds that sound like they're supposed to sound like something. You know? <laughs> and I'm not being self deprecating here. I, I, it's like I just don't have much training in in making music. So I feel like that'd be a way for me to avoid giving it a job to do. Um, but what if? We added something then. So if you're leaning toward noise, mm-hmm. how about um, mm, pick one scale and mm. use that as a constraint to make noise? Okay. 
So it's like like pentatonic scale kind of thing, right? Like I sure. look up how, how to do that scale yep. and then I just do that scale. E minor. Whatever. Okay. okay. Yep. And okay. yeah, pick any instrument, make noise with it, uh, try to do it frequently. Yeah, that would be cool. Like try to find something that w would have low cost and also increase the frequency so that, I, I mean, in the job in this case would just be like logging in some some time having experience with the tool, right? And not trying and to I, make something I, with it. Yeah. The, absolutely. And the, the scale is an idea, like that's an experimental thing. I mean, if you think that's, that's worth adding to the practice, uh, cool. My idea for offering it was, well, it gives a little structure, right? So like the relationships among the sounds, like we're pretty trained in, in, in hearing, right? And when you're doing something that has, um, this ex that rewards your expectation for harmonic relationships, then, uh, you don't have to be super fast at playing a scale, but it's, there are, a, you could easily do a Google search to be like, I don't know, like pick a, to help you pick and find and refer to the scale and then be able to just look at your instrument and then, you know, apply that. Right. Um, and then, but which in the application, instead of hearing noise that doesn't have harmonic relationship from your expectations, then hopefully uh, that could make the practice uh, something besides, uh, maybe less chaotic, which maybe that could help it be rewarding, but yep. not quite having a job. That sounds good. That sounds good. And, and well, it points more towards that te that student mindset that I was talking about. It's like, okay, this is just going to be good for me to do. It'll make me more familiar with, with music making. Um, but I don't have an objective of doing a recital or writing a song, right? I'm not making a thing. I'm experiencing the act of doing the practice itself. Now, I'm immediately thinking, okay, what about people who don't have a musical instrument in their house? I just found this, Rob. Let's see if this works. Oh, my goodness gracious, golly gee. Let's look at this right here. I just found an online. I just did a search for online piano. <laughs> and it's always oh, this corresponds to the keys of a keyboard uh -huh. yep oh my goodness <laughs> well that's yeah that really lowers the barrier for um you know for joining in yeah. and there are um free music apps like um which one in particular that's super robust is band lab so uh you can do a search for band lab and uh you'll have maybe too many tools in front of you as far as the practice because then you get immersed in like all the possibilities, but it had, that has, um, that has, um, uh, simulated instruments built into it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right there. And, you can do oh, it on the phone. Um, uh, -huh. yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can do that on, on any device as well, but, um, but yeah, online, there are websites that, that demonstrate, uh, keyboards and, and, uh, and the piano keys and stuff online. Um, and, and others as well. So, um, could, could you yeah. also use uh, a game like guitar fretter? to do this <laughs> so yeah true so there's a shortcut linked if you go to guitarfretter.com which um right now guitars fretter is still at its its super low price of two bucks on every platform the price is going up once i actually do the next release because i'm hard at work making a free version that'll be simplified and then the 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 full version which is starting to get more features will be a higher price but yeah there's a practice mode in, built into guitar fretter which that's a game that makes it um like playful to learn the note positions on a guitar fretboard four string five string bass six and seven string guitar so far mm. come sweet sweet yep guitarfretter.com okay not to be too mercenary about it but it is a tool that would help people you know so. <laughs> We are we're, we are artists and we make stuff. And yeah. when people uh, can benefit from it, yeah, that's right. wonderful. Please, uh, please uh, avail yourself of our products. All right. So our we got our practice. So are we ready to ready to go do it? I think so. Um, so to get it locked in our brains, we're gonna we're gonna make noise. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pick a scale, right? And so yep we're gonna we're gonna make some music and pick a scale and remember two minutes is a findable amount of time 
play along with our chosen practice or create your own, find your own way to hack the game and set a timer and you can comment and share your experiences in the Lean Into Art Discord, which you will find at leanintoart.com slash discord. Uh, make sure to share it in the Challenges Quest channel. And we'll be back in another two weeks with another two-minute practice. Uh, until then, I've been Jersey Droz of leanintoart.com, Jersey Droz on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com slash two-minute practice and Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye.